watch hentai all the time with Senpai. My soul is tormented by a succubus Call a sis, pants who dripping from the way I spit Fell in love Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video And as I promised, another day, another upload I'm going to be trying to keep this alive as long as possible I guess but yeah today we're going to be covering functions and events and with events I mean like for example when I click this a click event gets triggered and something happens I do not mean remotes because that's called remotes and not events even though some people call them events and I have probably done that myself sometime but yeah let us go into our Visual Studio. So, to create a function, we will do function the name, which could be like hello. And that's our basic function. And everything which is inside of here gets executed every time we trigger the function. So, since it's the hello function, we can print hello, for example. And this will print hello when it gets triggered. We can make it be triggered two times. And yeah, instead of printing hello, we could add an argument or well, basically a bit of info which you can pass through when triggering the uh, function. You can call it like name and then do space here. So we do dot 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 hello and then the name which got passed through so like hello name which can be like hello serial so we can do hello and then maybe serial then we can also add like a exclamation point and if we can print hello serial and like hello world and yeah, that's a basic function with arguments and stuff. No, uh, yeah, you could call them arguments, I guess. But yeah, uh, I think we should cover sub functions basically. So instead of having one function, we can create like a library, local. Oh shit local library equals an array then we can put the uh, functions inside of the array so then instead of doing hello we will do local lib equals library or just doing library but I'm just going to create a, a local for it hello Oh yeah, sorry. Didn't print anything in it. And yeah, you can see that this works. And you can add even more to it, like... Local sub equals... Mm -hmm. And then... Just that if you have this instead of a function... On the last line you have to return the sub. And then function sub like hello too and print yes and we would have to do like local hello equals blah 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 and then hello so basically what we're doing is just adding sub functions first off we get the library holds the main function which is called hello and the hello function prints hello your name and then an exc exclamation point which gets concatenated with these dots slash added together and when we execute it it returns the sub function which allows us to put a local variable with this sub function which makes us able to execute a sub function later so now we can add like function sub hello free and let's print it with free exclamation point. We can do hello 
feel free. Actually, we could main make this like main, main. Yeah, we can actually keep that. Yeah, that's a bit more understandable. Now we have a main, and we also have a two sub functions inside of it. But yeah, that's enough for sub functions. Just rewatch it if you want to get a better understanding of them. And I also have another video for it. Just rename this to test. So basically, you can, as seen, you can return values. So like return tan. Oh, tan, I don't know. There, return tan, we can do print test and it will print 10 because that's what we're returning so instead of just printing it we can have some arguments like 5 and 5 and we can do no um number 1 maybe number 2 and then we can return number 1 plus number 2 let's do like 25 you can see that it returns the first number plus the second number, which is quite useful. And that's basically returning. Um, you can change this like. Oh, shit. Bro, I'm struggling. And you will see it uh, did 25 times 5 instead of 25 plus 5. So, just a, I'll just cover callbacks a, quite quick I guess, so you can have, instead of returning it, we can have a callback, this is what nearly all UI libraries do, so we have our test function, then we also have a callback, which will be our function, and this function will get triggered print value maybe and if you've ever used a UI library you will probably recognize this so we want to p call callback comma number one plus number two and you will see that this triggers it triggers the callback function which is this function and then this function prints the value since we have the value here this will be the value and you can see that it prints 30 because 25 plus 5 is 30. And yeah, that's basically how that works. You could do like. So basically, you couldn't do print value outside of here, right? Because it doesn't exist. You could do like local val equals nil, val equals value, and then print. And we can print it outside. <laughs> and yeah, let me just bring up my sheet thing. We've done that, done that, done that. Okay, so we can also use get gamma and g for our functions, which makes our functions global. Uh, print yes we can execute this now oh, yeah. Uh, yeah let's just start out with e dot i guess so we can execute it right now nothing weird and then e dot test is executed later I'm actually unsure if this works with uh, get cam. Nah, does it work? Sorry. Yeah, so you would have to use e dot then. 
and that's basically how you make global functions so as long as you execute this once you can execute it anytime in the game this might not be that useful but if you're going to use a load string this is one of the ways to pass through functions or returning them through the load string that's also another way but yeah last off event functions so basically when i click this i want something to happen i just execute our text because i have to find this button yeah probably right here yeah that's the right one so okay, just copy path and then we have our uh, button right here always change your name to local play so basically we can do dot mouse button one click this will get triggered every time we click then connect to show for to roblox that we're actually going to be like connecting to it and yeah and then we pass through our function which we want to get executed we can do like print yes now we executed it two times so it should be printing yes two times yeah you can see that it works you can do like when it gets pressed you can change the dot back background color free equals color free dot from rgb You can see that it changed to red and yeah that's basically how that works uh yeah that would probably be everything for me today yeah if you guys learned something from this then just thumbs thumbs up, up i guess if you guys still have questions then i'm on discord serio hashtag zero 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 eight eight zero or just comment it and i'll respond Bye guys. No one knows me like a piano. You show me I have some fans.